So JFK to downtown Manhattan is going to be $150. Really? But you do it in 12 minutes rather than Holy an hour and a half. Cow. Well, we're sitting here in the Volocopter. Now, this one isn't the one that's flying. This is, tell me about this one. This is a Volo City aircraft. It's the aircraft that's going to go into commercial service in the next two to three years. Um, this is being produced, several of these are being produced in Germany. As we're speaking right now, they're going to be taking flight this summer. Um, and they are designed according to the SC VTOL, the Special Condition Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft by the EASA. That was published in the summer of 2019. Mm -hmm. The Volocopter 2X that flew earlier this week on Tuesday, and that's also in the tent over there. We started developing that in 2017. And at that point, there was no regulation for autonomous air taxis, right. or electrically powered air taxis. So for lack of a better <laughs> better guidance, we, we developed it according to the ultralight rules. So okay. it's 450 kilograms, payload 160 kilos for two, pa two people, a pilot and a passenger. And with this one, with the new regulation coming out, this is about 900 kilograms, that's uh, 1,500 pounds. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we've got also nine batteries, 18 rotors, so it's fully battery powered, no emissions in flight. We can take off and land vertically, which is super important because this is going to be an air taxi inside cities, right? Right. And space in cities is uh, limited, so you've got to make sure that you don't need a landing um, strip yeah. or an area where you, where you descend at an angle, but you can really go vertical. And with this multi-copter um, design, we can fly very stable, even if there are wind gusts or... Um, you can even lose some rotors. We can even, yeah, we can lose several rotors. Actually, the 18 rotors are the most visible And how many aspects. rotors? No, it's 18. <laughs> <laughs> Let's count together. <laughs> um, it's... Um, it's the most visible part of our safety system, right? The, mm -hmm. the Volocopter is at the same safety level as a commercial airline. Okay. That's one catastrophic accident in one billion flight hours. Wow. Because we are over... You've had a billion flight hours. That's amazing. We haven't. Oh, no, I'm just we kidding. We haven't, okay. <laughs> I don't know what your audience it, it, is, so oh, yes. I gotta... It's that I gotta I'm from Texas, so we have this humor, yeah. <laughs> I'm German, we don't have humor. No, I know, I know. <laughs> See, Martin Polly. <laughs> Um, so everything here, in order to get this 10 to the minus 9 safety system, everything here is redundant. It's multiple redundant. We have at least, we can lose at least three rotors, batteries, we've got three dissimilar flight controls. We've got a communication mesh where the, com the, the information can flow in many different ways. And that's how we can ensure that we will be as safe as an airliner. Because Although we're not doing long, um, long distances or uh, carrying many people, we are over highly, highly densely populated right. areas. So, so it's not just the couple of people that are in this; it's the people on the ground below. Exactly. Yeah, and and that's the interesting thing too about your company. This isn't. There's no controls here. I'm not flying. Um, you're not. You guys aren't into that. You're just yeah. looking for mobility of people, like a taxi in highly urbanized areas. Exactly. With this aircraft, it's just inside the city. Getting people from A to B, jumping over traffic, jumping over heritage infrastructure where you can't tear down the entire city to make it more efficient, right? Singapore has an advantage. They were built in a time where mobility was already a, a topic in population density, but you can't just tear down New York to make the no. traffic more efficient. And there's only so many subways you can build. There's only so many, so many um, gondolas. What do you call them? Cable Trams. carts. Cable cars, okay. Yeah. Um, that you can build in order to, to offer more mobility options to the citizens. And um, building a new subway takes a decade or two. Right. Building up an air taxi route is a matter of a year or two. With regulatory, let's first talk, you guys are in Europe, how difficult has it been 
especially compared maybe to other certificated air vehicles, how difficult is it to get this approved? At the beginning it was difficult because there was no regulation. Yeah, there's no path. Exactly, so you're, you're working from scratch, but luckily the European Aviation Safety Agency, which is our authority that we're working with, they've been super open. So we've been in contact with them for over four years already. Mm -hmm. And they were open, they're saying, yeah, okay, we're working on a regulation. They've invited mm -hmm. um, developers of EV tolls to come and sit on the table with them because one of the safety requirements is that you have enough fuel mm. to like do half the route again, right? Right. That's impossible with batteries, right? Oh, right. But you can say, hey, part of the safety system can be that we have enough battery power left to go find the next emergency exit uh, landing spot right so our routes will include that at the very beginning right so right. you can lose one two three batteries and still be safe to land at the next I don't know every 500 700 meters mm -hmm. at the emergency landing spot then the FAA let's talk about the United States and the FAA you guys have applied for a certificate We've applied for concurrent uh, certification, which means that we've applied with the FAA that they um, accept our certification with the EASA once oh, it's done. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that'll make it easier, I guess. And you're anticipating how long for the FAA to grant you that? That's a question of weeks. It's not. So once we've got European type certification, it'll be a couple of couple of weeks, maybe two months, but it's not a matter of several months. And we've, we've had somebody from the FAA on the show and they talked about how they're really working hard with um, eVTOL and other places. Um, are they being real cooperative, trying to help? Yes, they are cooperative. The, the administrator was actually, actually here looking at this. I mean, the authorities, they see the opportunity in this because this is a very um, safe way of flying, right? Once you've removed well, the pilot. Well, you say that, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I started doing drone stuff back 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and I've had too many drones just fly off and crash. That this is a little scary <laughs> for me, but I know that it's gotten so much better. But those drones don't get certified by the regulators, no, no, do no, they? No, they're not. <laughs> no, and, and yeah, so... It, it's, so here, yeah, everything is certified. There's no black box. It's completely transparent and visible for the... For the um, for the regulator, every line of code, right. everything, down to the last bit, <laughs> down to the provider of the carpet. Wow. <laughs> well, just like any certificated exactly. FAA airplane. The, um, this is a two-seater, yes. no pilot, so it's just for passengers. Um, are there any plans for larger ones? Yes, we do have um, an aircraft that's being built right now. It's called the Volo Connect. We have uh, scaled models that have, we've been flying for a year or so, and that's as an addition. So the studies show, our research show, that 90% um, of the urban air mobility market is going to be single passenger. Oh, okay. So, so you right so now, just have a lot of these rather yes. than a few larger ones. That well, makes sense. we're offering time savings, right? And you're diminishing these time savings if you've got to be waiting for two, three, four more uh, passengers to fill up oh, the ride. Oh, that's a really good point. And well, the, okay, so then that begs the question, if I'm in New York City and I want to jump on a volocopter to uh, go from uh, Midtown up to over to Brooklyn, how much is that going to cost me? It's going to be the same as a taxi price. Really? Yeah. So JFK to downtown Manhattan is going to be $150. Really? But you do it in 12 minutes rather than Holy an hour and a half. Holy cow! Yeah. I thought it would be a couple thousand dollars oh, or something. Oh, absolutely not. When we start at the very, very beginning, we're looking at about $300 when we have limited supply. But right. once we start scaling our production, we can use economies of scale on almost wow. everything. And this is going to be affordable to anyone who can afford a taxi. It's never going to be the same as a bus fare. No, well, that won't be possible, but it'll be affordable. And wow. especially with the time savings, it'll be a good option. Wow. All right, competition. Um, you guys are seem to be leading the way as far as cert certification. And there's um, always been a lot of talk and a lot of different people building prototypes. Um, tell me about your competition. There is a, a list of eVTOL projects around the world. I think it counts about 450 projects. Wow. And then you got to look, okay, what's the design? Who has built a full-scale prototype? Which of these prototypes have flown? Right, so here, right. you know, in the dozens 
of prototypes, maybe a handful that have actually flown. And then if you look at the number of them um, who, are, who actually have a path to certification, commercial certification, right. you can count it on one hand. Oh, wow. Um, and there are different missions. So um, Volocopter as a multicopter is strict for the inner mission, right? You, we, our mission looks like you've got a relatively long vertical flight, a short forward flight, and then a long descent right. again, but that's just vertical. So we are efficient in exactly that flight profile. If you go into the suburbs and beyond, that's you've got longer profile. difference, you want to fly faster. We don't expect to be allowed to fly the 60 miles an hour that we can fly inside right. a city for safety considerations, right? right? Um, but then if you do forward flight and want to go faster, you got to be optimized for that. This aircraft isn't, so we've got the Volo Connect that uh, serves that segment of the market. And there are um, other aircraft out there, some built jets. You've got the multi-rotor, you've got the a hybrid with push and lift aircraft that are winged. You've got tilt rotors. Mm -hmm. That technology is super exciting, mm -hmm. but it's extraordinarily complex yes. to yes, certify. It I think there are two certified tilt rotors and they're both certified in, under military right, right. Um, certificates, which we all know are not as high in the, uh, in the safety considerations. Right. Um, so the technology is amazing, but we for us think that with this multi-copter, multi simple it's simple technology um, is going to give us the edge to be certified faster be in the market faster be in touch with the customer faster and that's going to give us a significant edge well, I think so, you guys, yeah i think you guys were smart to focus on one niche kind of thing the 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 urban movement market because i think a lot of people are just so kind of like trying to do it all and they can't really focus. Yeah, the hybrid, it's like a, it's a flying car. It's not really, it's not a really good car and it's not a really good plane. Right. So, <laughs> right. right? Or it's one really bad and then the other one okay. Uh, what we did do, however, is we've got a lot of requests for a cargo version of this. And we've yeah. got a Volo drone, which allows to um, address the middle mile of transportation. And whether that's in construction or logistics or agriculture, Mm. That's also a use case for um, this configuration of the aircraft. Then you obviously don't have passengers sitting in it, but you've got an attachment to have Euro pallets under it or a sling or wow. whatever it may be. And then, as I as I mentioned, the Volo Connect, but that's that's out. That's not going to be certified in the oh, next wow. five, six, seven years. Um, because first we focus on that, but we yeah. understand that there's another market and there are other aircraft developers looking at that mid to longer range market. All right, well, so 2011 wasn't that long ago. So here we are at 2021, and in 10 years, how do you see this? What, what's it going to be like at EAA AirVenture 2031? Oh, you won't be taking a helicopter ride to go around here. You'll take a Volo City ride. Join the view of Oshkosh. With a whole bunch of air taxis. Yeah, and it'll be quiet. You won't even hear them. And you, you'll be able to just, oh, look, there's uh, the warbirds. And, uh, oh, look at those explosions from the field. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> all right. And oh. hopefully we'll all fly here with this and we're not stuck over there in traffic trying to. Oh, you know, I could use this just to get over to my plane in the <laughs> North 40. <laughs> oh, wow, that's far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. This was awesome. Thanks for stepping by. It, it's so awesome to get a, a, a taste of the future because really that's what this is and it truly is amazing. It is. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>